In this video, we are going to get into all of your Tesla stock news that you need to know for this Sunday in preparation for this update coming week, including what Gary Black just had to say about Tesla licensing FSD to legacy OEMs. We're also going to get into the short position in Tesla and how if Tesla stock continues to rally from here, shorts are about to take a massive beating and, and not a small beating like billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of a beating. Right now, you're at about the same dollar amount as Elon sold back in 2022 to finance the purchase of Twitter. And you've seen what happened to Tesla stock then. Imagine to the upside as rates fall, as the economy looks like we're not heading into a recession and Tesla's business might actually accelerate on the margin and delivery front. Just imagine. Well, we're going to here in this video. So we have a lot to get into in a very short amount of time. Hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you guys have not done so already. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. Now I want to talk about this first things first because I think this is a possible catalyst in 2024, a very realistic catalyst. Probably second half of 2024 towards the end of the year would make sense to me. I don't want to be too optimistic here, but Elon has already basically said they're in talks to license FSD to a legacy OEM, or as Elon said, a major OEM. Now, Gary Black is actually responding to this poll. This is a poll that Tesla Boomer Mama did on X or Alexandra Merce, uh, you know, just whatever you want to want to call her this, you know, that's fine. She says, so crucial question here, please vote and retweet for max exposure. What will have a significant impact on Tesla's financial results first? FSD V12, RoboTaxi, Optimus, or the $25,000 car? 51.6% voted for the $25,000 car, by far the most. Gary Black responds and says, This poll outcome, while surprising to some, makes perfect sense since it essentially doubles Tesla's TAM, total addressable market, by going mass market in a segment where Tesla is, is the clear market leader, can scale quickly, and and which can double or triple Tesla's enterprise value. While we can all envision ways the bot can be useful, we still expect or still can't predict its reliability similar to FSD or unit economics. Now, I guess there's two potential catalysts here for 2024. The licensing of FSD, in which we're going to talk about here in just a second and what Gary Black says about that, but also the $25,000 car. Tesla's probably going to start selling this in 2025. That means in some point, at some point in 2024, it's going to be announced. Again, this is probably a second half of 2024 catalyst. So my personal opinion, what really, you want to get as much exposure to Tesla now before the second half of 2024. Because if Gary Black says this could double or triple Tesla's enterprise value, a, a fancy way of saying double or triple Tesla stock, second half of 2024, you could see some Big gains. Gary Black says, as I've said many times, OEMs signing agreements for the customers to use Tesla superchargers is way different than licensing Tesla FSD. The former is exogenous to the hardware and software of the car. FSD is the brains of autonomous driving. Until the OEMs realize they can't get there on their own, they won't cede full self-driving to Tesla. And this is probably something that also happens in 2024 in the second half of the year i i i mean i think tesla would license fsd to many automakers like you're seeing with the, the charging technology but especially for china right when when fsd does um get launched in china i mean a honda or a toyota or all of bmw these these other brands that want to compete in tesla uh, even BYD for that matter. China is is very tech savvy. They like technology, right? The the high the higher developed areas of of China. I think that's that's pretty obvious, right? People are going to want FSD. I think a licensing deal for FSD might actually happen in China 
before it happens in the U.S., believe that or not. I think the rules and regulations are a little less strict over in China, and this could actually be something that is forced on automakers in China, uh, relatively speaking, if, if they just don't want to continue to lose to Tesla, they might have to partner with Tesla for full self-driving. Now, full self-driving sells for you know, lower in China than it does in the U.S. by about $4,000 or so per unit of FSD. But the volume of FSD that could get deployed in China is game changer like levels for Tesla stock. I guess I will say it like this. I think this is a 2024 catalyst. Don't be surprised if it is 2025. In the grand scope of things, even 2025 is not that far away. It's about a year away. It's not that far. In other news, NHTSA head who led Tesla autopilot investigation will step down due to a law that limits how long officials can remain in the position. Hopefully they get someone else in there that is a little more Tesla friendly. Although I'm not going to have high hopes or expectations for that. Ashcock, the director of autopilot at Tesla, says Tesla's with ultrasonic sensors will get the high fidelity park assist feature as well. This is what he is referencing, where you could basically see all around you and where different vehicles are parked in this really 3D image. And it looks like we are seeing video proof of a lot more cyber trucks getting delivered. This is to a showroom in Austin, Texas, so not too far from the factory itself, getting ready to be shipped to customers. Elon Musk says that some advertisers that paused spending on X last month are already returning to the platform. That's great news for Tesla because you need to see X do well, or at least not do poorly, or Elon will sell more stock in Tesla, and that will be negative for Tesla stock. LK Technology has partnered with Nisa Motors to introduce the world's first 2,000 ton gigapress. This unit will have the highest clamping force in the world, with the potential to cast the entire car body chassis of B-class vehicles and larger. Another 50 or so people DM'd Sawyer Merritt, uh, through the night showing they got invited to by Tesla to configure Foundation Cybertrucks. A lot of them just checked their Tesla account and didn't receive emails about it. People from over 15 different states who have never lived in Canada or Texas got, or Canada, California or Texas got invited since last night. He says he loves to see it. And that's exactly that, that they're just letting you configure your, you know, Foundation Series Cybertruck, a lot of them are are likely to be delivered uh, in the near term future. We're seeing quite a bit of them coming out of the Texas uh, Gigafactory, and we're probably going to see more than the 1,000 that we were initially told about. We're probably going to see a couple thousand or more. Looks like there's a lot of good demand for the cyber beast. As you can see from this video, 687 Teslas are playing Sandstorm in Finland. James Cat writes on X why he thinks margins will improve in 2024. The IRA point of sale in the US, the Model 3 Highland, lower interest rates, weaker US dollar, Model Y, Model 3 sales mix, uh, Cybertruck, higher average selling price, greater FSD penetration with V12. Negatives are losing the $7,500 Model 3 IRA credit, losing uh, the Germany credit, uh, which is 4,500 uh, euros, losing 5,000 euros in France on Model 3. Maybe Tesla will ship Model 3 to Europe from Fremont to offset this. Um, that would uh, be a benefit to France. And we've seen a lot of deliveries in, in France over the past really two quarters now. It seems like some people are trying to take advantage of that. And that did probably boost sales ultimately. Now, costs for commodities continue to fall. Transportation costs continue to fall. And fixed production costs also continue to fall, whereas manufacturing labor 
is actually rising. He says, overall, my base case assumes that the impact of falling costs is greater than the impact of falling prices. Therefore, I expect 2024 auto margins to improve. I think Q4 will be the worst than Q3, but it should be the bottom. Unless I am overstating the impact of IRA going to point of sale, this will become more clear after Q1. We need to see how the cus- uh, consumer reacts and how Tesla responds in Europe. I agree with James Cat on all of these things, but I do think if we really get six rate cuts uh, by the end of 2024, which in in real terms could be eight or 10, um, you could see rates back at around 3%, in my opinion, towards the end of 2024. You could see 50 basis point rate cuts if the economy did start to weaken a little bit. I think that puts Tesla in a position to raise prices again, and that's obviously going to affect the margins. You know, some, something very interesting happens when a business goes through hard times. Let's be honest, 2023 was hard times for Tesla. Some points in 2022 were hard times for Tesla. Tesla has been forced to become efficient. If Tesla was not as efficient as they are right now, they would not have been able to lower prices. Tesla is more efficient now than they were at the start of 2023 than they were in 2022, 2021, or 2020, or any other year. Tesla is the most efficient beast that it is now, um, you know, than it has been in any other period of time ever. And that helps margins a lot. Just helps the business overall, but specifically margins, if you want to use that as the focal point. If, if Tesla can raise prices, the margins could get back to new all-time highs for Tesla. Just imagine if that happens. That is the last thing that your analyst bulls or bears are expecting. Some people even believe Tesla will hit $300 by the end of this year, which honestly, if you look at the chart of Tesla, that's not too unrealistic. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Some people on X seem to be mocking the latest news that we have gotten that Tesla will be recalling 2 million vehicles, basically all of the vehicles it has on US streets. Tesla Chase on X says, I got my Tesla recall today. What about you? And it's a software update because that's all this recall at was from the start but the headlines made you think that all tesla vehicles were getting pulled off of the road jake over here on x i'm not going to even try to pronounce his last name says tesla a big breakout this week while the macd curls to the upside this could definitely make a big move soon proof on x says tesla the big breakout is here popping out of the first flag with potential resistance between 264 and 265 headed to 300 next without a doubt by 2024 he believes mid-year we have a target of 350 and a longer term target into 2025 of 450 i believe the longer term target is much higher than 450 uh in 2025 i think tesla stock could be 600 dollars or higher but definitely 300 dollars in the in the more near term looks pretty realistic to me After all, let's break this down in as simple as terms possible. You've gotten a lot of resistance at this downtrending line. You now broke above this downtrending line. Worst case scenario, this downtrending line will turn into support. Best case scenario, Tesla stock continues higher. Into support, I agree, around 264, 265. Why is that? Well, Again, in simplest terms possible, if you connect a downtrending line here from the peak, right, you're going to get a a little bit different kind of, of trend line here. There's actually two different trends going on in a longer term trend itself, right? Uh, This shorter term trend is connecting from Q2 back when Tesla was at at about $300 to all of the points that you have seen on any of the upside rallies. You've gotten resistance. Now you broke above that. The longer term downtrending line is connecting the all time high peak. And I think that one's more substantial for that $300 rally. But this all but pretty much confirms a rally to 264 265 to me whether or not we find resistance and break out above the longer long term multi-year downtrending line instead of multi-month downtrending line as i would probably categorize uh this one that we've went over so far here in this video well if you get above that that's where you can see substantially 
larger upside from here. And at this point, I think there's a much greater likelihood that we do get that substantial upside than any remote large downside from here. I mean, I really don't think there's a chance that Tesla cuts prices. It looks clear Tesla is going to at least meet or exceed their full year delivery guidance for 2023. I just don't see a lot of room for Tesla stock to fall from here unless we got some really bad economic data that signaled we were heading into a recession. That's possible that we could get data like that on Friday of this week, when you get personal spending, personal income, PCE data, some finalized GDP numbers coming out, I believe, on Wednesday as well. Some of those data points could be important, but I'm not expecting the economy is rapidly deteriorating right now. So minus that, Tesla stock, I think, is going substantially higher from here. So it seems like the Tesla breakout is actually here. But like we will talk about in the next video, the RSI is at 63.52. While this is not over 70 or not technically overbought, you're still pretty high. To see some sideways trading action a little bit here in the upcoming week, at least in the beginning of the week, would make sense to me as well. So I don't think it's just every day we're ripping higher till we hit $300 per share. That's not exactly it. Expect you could trade sideways a little bit, make another gap up higher. Maybe that's on Friday. You hit 264, 265. We'll talk about where I think Tesla stock will be by the end of this week in the next video. So stay tuned to the channel for that one. But it's not going to be up vertical in a straight line. I, I think it is going to take some time. But in the next couple of weeks, could Tesla be $300 per share? Absolutely. Another contributing factor to Tesla's upside rally over the next couple of weeks, in my personal opinion, is the massive short position that is currently betting against Tesla. The simple fundamentals of when you take on a short position, you lose money when the stock goes higher. Well, that is dramatically worse when it's a stock like Tesla. There's a lot of volatility and you can be susceptible to huge rallies. Now, Tesla is a almost what like 800 billion dollar company or so in the high 700 billion range so when 3.31 percent of the float is sold short that means a lot of dollars are sold short currently 22.56 billion dollars are sold short in tesla stock this is almost a three month high and uh, uh you know pretty close to a six month high as well you were actually higher in july when about 27 billion dollars were sold short in tesla so just doing a little bit of simple math here if tesla stock gets back to about 280 you're going to be roughly at about 27 28 billion dollars sold short if you get above that if you rally into you know ab above 280 into 290 or even 300 or higher that's when you could see some big upside from shorts covering on short positions because I don't think at that point it's going to be a small amount of shorts. Could be a lot of shorts because there's a lot of speculation out there that that some funds are just very short in Tesla. Jim Chanos, right? The, these other guys, even Bill Gates potentially having over a billion dollars worth of a short position in Tesla. I mean, those are not small positions. If those were to rapidly get covered on, that could be a big problem for other shorts and a big benefit to Tesla stock investors. Now, when this happens, I don't know, from now to the end of this year, possibly in Q1, I think so. I, th I, th I think that's uh, a, a pretty fair assumption, uh, at least in my personal opinion. Now, to also point out, $22.5 billion is roughly the same amount of uh, worth of you know stock that elon sold in tesla as well and you already know what that did to tesla stock it really hurt tesla imagine to the upside it could potentially really help out tesla as well option activity over the past week was slightly on the negative side about 40 percent positive order value now on friday positive order value jumped to 64 percent given we had a lot of catalyst a lot of potential fear uh or downside that could have came to a stock like a tesla the fact that the last week was 40 percent positive order value that makes sense to me 64 percent positive order at order value on Friday just shows there were a lot of funds, a lot of people getting into bullish positions in Tesla. Now that they 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 kind of know the coast is clear for a while. The the Fed is is done. We're not going to have another Fed meeting until 
late January. Finally, we are seeing a breakdown lower in global Model Y inventory. We need to see, hopefully, this does continue to fall. Model 3 inventory is also going lower. Model S and X inventory just continuously is going lower. Google trend activity is showing some stabilization of Model 3 and Model Y search trend activity. The Cybertruck holding strong at 76 as far as Google trend activity, but is forecasted to fall as low as 40 in the next coming weeks. But 40 would still be higher than the Model 3 or the Model Y. So I would say that's still good news. The latest AI investor sentiment survey, we've went over this a couple times here on the channel, shows the bulls are in full control. Bulls at 51.3%, neutral investors at 29.4%, and bears at 19.3%. Tesla continues to run about 300 different ads globally via Google Ads. Another reason why I do believe stocks might trade sideways for a little while is the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average is higher than any point you've seen during the summertime so is the broader index you you've just recently hit new highs um and you're at almost 80 percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average so to see a little bit of a slowdown here a little bit of a contraction or even sideways action here would not surprise me. If you are someone that is a little bit bearish right now, I think tactically playing the indexes to the downside might make sense, but I don't, it, it's not a strong enough thesis because I don't think the data this week's going to be negative. I don't think the markets will be that negative until the economic data starts to show a slowdown. But as Goldman Sachs points out, now is one of the cheapest times to buy protection over the last decade that would mean it's the cheapest time to buy puts in over 10 years now dan ives says the growing labor dispute between tesla and its repair workshop mechanics that originated in sweden uh is it, it originated in sweden and has now escalated to include Denmark, Finland, Norway with Musk and Co. in a WWE-like standoff throughout Scandinavia. We believe contained, but union issues not going away. FX Evolution also shared this on X that says there is a almost record divergence here between smart money and dumb money, putting money to work in our markets. He says history suggests that returns of negative 1.1% have happened over two months in similar situations. One crucial point to highlight is that according to Goldman Sachs, CTAs again started buying last week into the OPEX, suggesting the market might push higher still as it turns parabolic. And you can see uh, smart money, dumb money tend to do different things. Smart money has been playing it a little bit too passively here recently, I think they don't want to be caught off sides again with another very strong 2024. Although I don't think the indexes are going to do well in 2024, I, I, I don't think they're going to be do terrible as well. I just don't think they're going to be even close to small caps or interest rate sensitive names. That in turn, probably does push even more money into a stock like Tesla. That is all of your Tesla stock news and analysis that you need to know for the day today. In the next video, we're going to get into exactly where I expect Tesla to go in this upcoming week, my Tesla price prediction for this week. And I think the bulls are definitely going to like this. I think it's going to resonate a lot with the data that we have been seeing in Tesla. I mean, the charts are pretty clear. I think Tesla stock's going higher, at least in the short term. But again, we could see a little bit of chop in the week ahead. We do have some economic data as well with a focal point on Friday. So you definitely want to watch the next video coming out at 8.30 p.m. tonight, Eastern Standard Time. If you guys want to come join the trading community, link down below in the description of this video. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.